Welcome to the Royalty Room Live. Let's talk about it. Entrepreneur, person of interest here in Atlanta, Jenna Torres. Hi, Jenna. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> so, uh, I don't ever win raffles, so that was really remarkable. I got an awesome candle out of the deal also. How old is your daughter? 13, and then I have a 12-year-old, a 10-year-old, and then a soon-to-be 3-year-old. I was with my mom who raised me. Her name was Randy. She kept me from the moment I was born up until her passing when I was 11 going on 12. Um, my mom was bed bound. My mom had a lot of medical issues. My mother was also um, drug dependent, so she used different types of drugs. I don't doubt that she was in pain. I don't doubt mm -hmm. that she lived a painful life. She passed yeah. away actually December 22nd. So this year will make 15 years since my mom has passed. Mm -hmm. After that, I stayed with my godmother and I stayed with her, I would say about four months. Okay. And at that time, I think that was really misunderstood. I was grieving my mom. Yeah. I didn't really have a good closure with my mom. Um, and so therapy wasn't helping. There really wasn't any saving grace. And so my godmother like kind of threw her hands up and was like, look, I don't know what to do and I just want to keep you safe. So she put me in foster care. Uh, foster care, I went to a couple of homes. I ended up getting pregnant. When she finally figured out I was pregnant, I was probably like almost seven months pregnant. Really? I had a completely flat stomach. So it was like really easy. I didn't have morning <laughs> sickness. I oh, kind of wow. I got away with it for a long time. I see. <laughs> She didn't shame me. She didn't make me feel bad. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, she helped me make sure I like was able to go to school. So she would teach me how to raise the children so that they are not rambunctious mm -hmm. and that people would be willing to help me if you raise your children in a way where people are going to help you solicit with help. She definitely just took her time and really just was understanding. And obviously, I went on to have many more children in her household. <laughs> um, and so I think she was like, she would always say that I'm like my mild mannered. And, you know, I still was stubborn. I still was a kid. I still did kid stuff. But it wasn't nearly as bad as I think it could have been. Um, and she was had a lot of patience and a lot of grace. You were a kid raising kids and she was teaching you and she was raising you. Mm hmm and teaching you how to be a mother to raise them. Mm -hmm. When you don't have a teachable spirit, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. You learn things the hard way. And I definitely have learned way too many things the hard way. And at some point, you just have to surrender. You just give in and be like, listen, there's obviously people in this world who are well-equipped with different experiences that I do not yet like exist with. And how do I learn to take away some of those things so that I can make my life more effortless. Because mm -hmm. learning the hard way is not it. <laughs> Beautifully said. Yeah. It, it is not <laughs> it, honey. It's not it. No, it, life is hard enough. Yeah. You don't want to learn every lesson, not every lesson the hard way. Or learn the same lesson multiple times. Woo! <laughs> Try to preach about it. I like, can't tell you. Mm. I've literally learned the same mm. lesson three times. <laughs> <laughs> And it was, and each time was progressively worse. And I can blame a lot of things on my experiences and the things that I've experienced in life, but that's not going to solve anything. I've mm -hmm. still experienced those things. Mm -hmm. I still am who I am today. Mm -hmm. um, I can blame a lot of things and a lot of reasons on how I came to be, but mm -hmm. I definitely don't think it's a blame. I think it's just motivation. Yes. I could have been anywhere else in the world, but I definitely believe that my life story is or like divinely mm -hmm. ordained has been planned out because there's things that I truly don't believe that I should have survived and I did anyway. There isn't a lesson in that. I don't know what else I to did. tell. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't take that for granted as yes. much as I be uh, I can get upset and frustrated with life. I definitely know when I sit down and I look at my poetry and I look at the things I've written and the places I've been, I know for a fact that there is a reason, a purpose, as mm -hmm. to why I have to do the things that I do. The sex industry was the place that I experienced the least amount of violence, the least amount of harm. Really? Um, I mean, I've experienced way more harm in regular nine to fives than I have in the sex industry. And so, you know, my experience in the industry is not a terrible one. Um, there has been terrible moments, as in every other job that you work ever. Um, 
but I also know that for me, it's not a sustainable way of life. It, mm-hmm. it wasn't my path to be there mm-hmm. forever. And so I advocate, I'm part of an organization called the Sustrata Mutual Care Collective, where we do um, direct services to people in the industry. Um, we educate people about the differences between people in the sex work industry and people who have been human, tra- like who are, have human trafficking experiences. How those things often run parallel to each other, but they are not the same. Woo! Now <laughs> let, let, let's talk about your books. Now yeah. let's talk about the second one. Dear Mom, Love Letters of a Grieving Daughter. So um, I've. Like I said, poetry has saved my life many times. Um, and part of it was like processing that my mom has passed. I was angry with my mom for a long time. Cause I'm like, how dare you like let drug addiction win? How dare you not get better? How dare you leave me? How dare you do all the things of like, why would you set me up to do that? Like it didn't make any sense to me. And through nonprofit work and through other ventures, I realized like it's actually not that simple and it's not it's not a choice it's at some choice, point. Yeah. It's it's life. Um, I had to learn to forgive my mom. I had to learn to forgive myself. I had to learn how to really embrace the things that my mother has taught me in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of the poetry in there is not actually what you would consider to be a love letter. It's more of like me talking to my mom because I didn't have anybody else to talk to. Can you tell me about the first book? In Between Breaths was a book that existed a lot of my poems came from when I was younger um, high school um, there's poems in there talking about teenage motherhood um, there's some poems in there talking about um, a rela- a relationship that I recently had um, and about what it looks like to really still have full responsibility of your children and be in heartbreak and sadness and all the things um, and really just like loving hard and Mm -hmm. loving even in places and spaces that are not the right fit of like learning through love if that makes sense so there's some Mm -hmm. poems about that who do you think it can that book is made for to read um i think this book is made for definitely young parents pregnant and parenting um individuals i definitely think people who've lost their mom people Mm -hmm. who know what it's like to have parents who are drug dependent Mm -hmm. um, because that in itself is a really unique life to navigate. People who just don't know um, will tell you what they believe Mm -hmm. it was and but you know the truth and Mm -hmm. that's the only thing that my mentor definitely told me and showed me was to be honest in my in my poetry and my writing. Anything that I wrote had to be the God honest truth. It was the one thing that he taught me that really really stuck was to be absolute honest in your poetry. If anybody takes anything away from anything that I've said, I really love seeing people come to our writing workshops, the ones that I host, the one that I create, um, to really just be able to deep, dive deep into like things that they prompts that they didn't even think really mattered. And I didn't know that what I was creating was poetry. I was just writing things because that's how I felt. And there was nobody else to really listen. Like, I, when I was younger, I did have some therapy. But it really wasn't um, people who were culturally based therapists. My hope is that I will continue through the different adventures. And I just love being a part of communities. I love being able to offer my expertise and directing people where they need to go. I have a post-it note on my wall that says be the bridge and not a gatekeeper. So mm-hmm. anything that I have access to and knowledge to, people are free to um, participate in because I like community uh, connecting and bridging communities together. So what's your favorite song right now? Um, his It's called Stressed Out by my partner. But yeah, I begged him to release it. Herb Shardy, there he is. Yes. It's a group that called GMF. Don't even worry about it. Don't even be so shy. Can you know it, baby? You really look so fine. You got me crazy. I cannot stop thinking about you, baby. I cannot stop thinking about the way you look. I cannot stop thinking about you without no makeup. Cause I'ma show you I love you. I'm gonna make love with you, baby. Hey. She's a black girl. That was hot. That was hot. I really liked it.
like that. Yeah. Jenna, I am just completely in awe of you as a black woman, as a mother, as an activist. You're an amazing published author. Thank you for coming on my show. Thank you for sharing your story with our listeners. Yes. And I wish you nothing but the best. What have been the chance of me winning? You won the scratch <laughs> off. I won she the scratch off. She won the scratch off to be on the show. And that's it. Amazing. So everything is divinely planned. And we're going to have a long journey together. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Oh, thank you so yeah, much for lovely. coming. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in to the Royalty Room Live. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. You got me crazy. I cannot stop thinking about you, baby. I cannot stop thinking about the way you look. I cannot stop thinking about you without no makeup. Kill I'm going show you.